right, so now we move on to section 6b. And in this section, we talk about measures of variation. So we talk about um, variation, which is the spread of our data, uh, and then what we call standard deviation. Uh, and uh, we talk about uh, how to find these. So a standard deviation, measure of variation for symmetric distributions. And so remember from our last section, 6a, um, our distributions of most of our data is going to fall into two categories, symmetric distributions and then skewed distributions. Uh, and in the skewed distributions, it could either be right or left uh, skewed. And so here it says, now look at how we might measure the variation, which is another word like a for spread of our data set. In other words, we need to find a way to measure how much the data values vary from one another. The most basic way to measure variation in a data set is to measure the overall range. All right, so this is another measure of central tendency. So in 6a, we focused on mean, median, and mode. Range is another of those measures. When we were first looking at graphs, we mostly talked about variation as the overall range of values included in the data set. For instance, we might have said the ages of the first six chief justices range from 44 to 59 years old. So this is the lowest age of a, a judge, and this is the highest. Now we will calculate the range by measuring the distance between the largest and smallest values in the data set. So let's calculate the ranges for our chief justice data sets. So this is the first six chief justices ages, uh, and then this is the most recent. So like it tells you here, to find the range, it's very, very simple. You just take the largest value and you subtract the smallest value from it. Um, so if you look here at this little uh, summary statistic chart, this is taken from Excel, uh, which is a very uh, good tool uh, when you're calculating mean, median, mode, range, average. It has all that already inputted into the Excel file. Um, and so as you can see, you have your column, minimum, maximum, and the range, and it automatically calculates it. So if you did 59 minus 44, you would get 15. So this is the range for the first six chief justices. Uh, and then if we do the most recent six chief justices, well, what is their minimum age? Well, if we look here, the, the youngest person was 56 years old. Uh, and then the oldest person was 69. So if we were to subtract, we go 69 minus 56, we would end up with 13. Okay, uh, and you need to be very careful because subtraction order matters, okay? You cannot do 56 minus 69 and write equals 13. This is wrong. F uh, 56 minus 69 equals negative 13, which would not make any sense if you're dealing with age, okay? So when you're subtracting, you need to make sure that the maximum age comes first and the minimum age comes second. And now it says, write one or two sentences using the ranges you just found to compare variation or spread. Remember, this is like spread. In ages of those two groups. So we, we could say something like the ages of the first six chief justices were spread over a 15 year range. Uh, we could say while the ages of the recent six chief justices were spread over a 13 year range. 
Also, um, the variation age appears similar, right? There's not a very big, uh, very big variation in age between the first six uh, chief justices and the uh, recent six uh, chief justices. So we could also say that the variation or spread in age appears similar. Now, the biggest problem with using the range to talk about variation is that it ignores how all the values in the middle are distributed, right? Because what does range do? It compares the largest value with the smallest value. So we don't know a lot about the middle values. We need a more inclusive way to talk about how all the data are spread out. So instead of continuing to use the range, we will learn a better way to describe variation by considering, and this is very important, how far our data are spread from the center. So let's look at this graph here. Here are dot plots for each of the Chief Justice data sets. Each dot represents a Chief Justice. The mean age for each group is marked, in, uh, is marked with a vertical line. So here are our two uh, mean groups. Remember, mean is another word for average. So here is the, the average. Uh, and then so you can see here about three chief justices are below the average and here three are above. If we look at this one here, you have also a pretty, you have two that are almost exactly on the, uh, the average, uh, two that are below it and then two that are above it. So it says you found in problem one, that these groups had a similar range. But now let's look more closely at how the data values are spread from the center. What group of chief justices had ages that were spread further away from the mean age in the center? So if we look at these two groups, looking at their center, which of these groups are spread out further from the center? Well, clearly the first six, right? Because there's a lot more distance uh, between that mean than here. Here, these are all much more closer to the mean. So we say that this group has more variation in ages. And if you're doing like a, a study, right, you may not want more variation, right? This may be um, an indicator that what you're trying to find may not be as exact as you want it, right? Because if you have a lot of spread around your, your center, then it kind of tells you that this mean is not a very good representation of your overall data because there's there's a lot of variation between the data values. Whereas if they're a lot more close together, then um, it kind of tells us that our, our, our center, our, our average, our mean, is going to be a lot better uh, descriptor of this data. All right, let's continue. Okay, so here we calculate the mean age uh, of the first six justice from problem one. Um, and so this, if you recall from our lecture notes from uh, a 6A, we found that the mean age of the first six chief justices was 51.8. Okay. And again, how do you find the mean? You just add up all the numbers, and then you divide by how many numbers. So since there are six uh, chief justices, you'd add up these, divide it by six, and that gives you our mean. And remember, this notation, we say x bar, that represents the mean. Now it says, we will look at how far each data value deviates from the mean. The difference between a data value and the mean is called its deviation. 
from the mean. Find the deviations for the ages of the first six chief justices and record them in this table. And so again, since we are subtracting here, it is very important that we always start off with our x, right? And in this case, our x is the age, and we subtract the mean from it, okay? Because here, positive or negative will tell us something. So we have to be very careful with this order. So here, we will start off with 56, and we will subtract 51.8. So this will give us a positive value of 4.2. Then this will start off with 51, and then we'll subtract the mean, which again is 51.8. And this will end up with a negative 0.8. Here we'll do 45 minus 51.8. Uh, and this will also give us a negative number, negative 6.8. Here we'll do 59 minus 51.8. Uh, and this will give us a positive value of 7.2. Lastly, we will have 56 minus 51.8, uh, and this will give us a positive value of 4.2. Now, consider the deviation for the age of 44 years. So that is right here, this one right here. Write a sentence to interpret this deviation. Why is it negative? So we could say, the age, 44, is 7.8 years below, and this is why it is negative, the mean age of 51.8 years. Okay, so here the positive or the negative tells you whether the age is above or below the mean age. Okay, so it's very important that you do not switch these around. Now, which age is the closest to the mean age of 51.8 years? Well, if you look at it, which one was the least devi deviation? This one right here, right? So 51. Which age is the furthest? So which one has the furthest deviation? This one right here. So age 44. Now, to measure the variation in a symmetric data set, statisticians look at how far the data values are from the mean in either direction. As you found in the previous problems, the deviation can be either positive or negative. However, we will always describe distance to the mean as a positive number. So here, when we were talking about uh, the age, we could not say the age 44 is negative 7.8 years. That doesn't make sense, right? You cannot have negative years. So when we um, describe our deviation, the negative or positive will be this right here. So positive would be above, and negative would tell us a below. Now, here it says, which of the following statements best summarizes the deviations you found above as distances? So let's see A. The ages of the first six chief justices were typically about two years from the mean of 51.8 years old. So if we look at all these values here, would you say that more or less they're all two? No, right? They're way larger than two. This is four, seven, six, four, seven, and then almost one. So definitely A is, is incorrect. The ages of the, the first six chief justices were typically about six years from the mean of 51.8 years old. Uh, and then the ages of the first six chief justices were typically about 10 years from the mean of the 51.8 years old. So if we look at these uh, deviations, would it be closer to say six years or 10 years? Well, let's see. This is less than two points from six. This is less than two points from six. This is definitely less than two points from six. This is more, and this is less. So here, uh, five of the data points are less than 
uh, two points uh, difference from six. However, if we try 10, you're gonna have a very large difference um, from all of these. Uh, so definitely the, the sentence that best describes uh, the variation would be B, the six years. In the previous problem, we used a single number to estimate the typical distance of data values from the mean. Statisticians calculate what is called the standard deviation to more accurately measure this typical distance. Due to the details involved in this calculation, we will use technology when we need to calculate the standard deviation in this class. Okay, so the formula for standard deviation is a bit more complicated um, than just the regular deviation. And so for the purposes of this class, uh, we, it'll either be provided for you or you'll, we'll use a calculator to calculate it for us. And so here, um, the standard deviation we abbreviate as uh, low caps S. Uh, this is a measure of variation, the typical distance of a data value to the mean of the data set. The standard deviation represents distance, so it is always non-negative. Okay, and the reason they use this word non-negative and not positive, well, think about it. What is the difference between non-negative and positive? That's correct. It is zero. Okay, when it says non-negative, include zero. Oops. Includes zero. If it says positive, then zero is not included. And so here, the standard deviation could be zero because if you have a data point that is sitting right there on the, on the mean, you're not gonna have any deviation. And so it could be zero, but you could not have a negative number. Now let's look at number seven. It says the standard deviation for the ages of the first six chief justices is 6.24 years. This tells us that the ages of the first six chief justices are typically 6.24 years above or below the mean age. Explain how this, sorry, explain how 6.2, Four years is a reasonable summary value for the deviations you calculated uh, in the problem six. So, we could say some ages are closer and some are farther from the standard deviation, which is just SD, of 6.24. It is a good typical distance. Okay, not too far. So pretty much all of the data points are gonna be included between whether it's about 6.24 6 uh, 6 years below or 6.24 years above. Now, if you had something like 20 years, so it could be like 20 years below the mean or 20 years above the mean, then you have way too much spread and then your, your um, information statistics, so like the mean, that may not give you any useful information because it's too broad. And so uh, when we have the mean, we always want to look at our deviation, our standard deviation to see, well, is, does this talk about most of the data or does it only talk about the data that is close to the mean and not the data that is spread out? Now, suppose the standard deviation for the ages of the most recent six Supreme Justices is 4.24 years. Complete the following to compare the two groups. The ages of the first six chief justices were typically, right, and from the previous problem we said 6.24 years from the mean, while the ages of the six most recent chief justices were typically 4.24 years from the mean. The ages of the first six chief justices had more variation than the ages of the most recent six 
chief justices, right? Because this is larger than this. So here you had a bigger, you had about 6.24 years below and 6.24 years above, where here you only had 4.24 years below and 4.24 years above. Uh, does this uh, description go along with your pick from problem two? So if we look back, right, um, at our problem two, right, we said it was the first six that had more variation. So that is correct. So we can say yes. Now, what age would be a distance of one standard deviation below the mean of 51.8 years? So let's see. Below, we're going to take our 51.8 and we're going to subtract one standard deviation. And since we're talking about the first six chief justices, our standard deviation was 6.24. So if we subtract this, we will end up with... 45.56, and that'll be this. What age would be a distance of one standard deviation above the mean age? So above means we are going to add it. And that will give us 58.04. As an exact value. Mark these values on the horizontal axis. Okay, so we know it's about 55 is right in the middle. This is a bit more. So we may mark it um, maybe here. Uh, and the higher one is what, 50, a little bit right, right after 58. So we may mark it right here, 58.04. All right, so now we uh, look at ways of measure, measuring variation for skewed distributions. Uh, and we do that using quartiles and what we call the five number summary. So to measure the spread of data with a uh, skewed distribution, we will use quartile values. Uh, the median splits our data set in half. Uh, and then the quartiles split each half in half again to give us quarters. 25% of our data in the each quarter. Um, so here in this box kind of summarizes um, our five number summary and uh, how to find it. So we have our low value, which is the smallest uh, value of the data. We have the median, right, which is um, the middle uh, with all the data sets, um, all the data values in order. You find the middle. If it is an uh, odd number of data values, then you just have one value in the middle. That's your answer. Uh, and if you have an even number of da data values, then you have to find the two numbers left in the middle and take the average of those two numbers. And remember, average is the same as mean. So you would just add those two numbers together and divide by two. And then we have the high value, which is the largest value uh, in the data set. Uh, and then we have what's called the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So to find the lower quartile, we now consider the data only from the lowest value to the, the median. And we find the median of this new little uh, set, and that's our lower quartile. And then to find our upper quartile, quartile, we again consider only the values from the median to the highest value, and then take the middle or the median of that. And that would give us our upper quartile. And then here it says, note, if you have an odd number of data values, the median is an actual data value. If it is not part of the lower or upper half of your data set uh, and should not be included in either when you find the quartiles. Okay, so when we have an odd number of data values, um, then the median is that actual value. So we would not consider that value when we're um, counting our um, numbers for the lower quartile or for the upper quartile. All right, let's go to the next page. 
So here, um, we introduce what's called a uh, box plot. So it says box plots are graphs that help us better picture how the median and quartiles are spaced, as well as helping us focus on more typical data values in the middle of the data set. Box plots give more emphasis to the middle 50% of the data values by showing these as boxed regions. They de-emphasize the highest and lowest 25% of the data values by showing these ranges as thin lines, which we call whiskers. Now, we can draw uh, box plots vertically or horizontally. I will say, however, that the horizontal uh, box plot is probably the most common and popular way to draw it, but, you know, both are acceptable ways to draw it. And as you can see, that 50% being between the lower quartile uh, and the upper quartile, because you have the 25% here, the 25% here, that is kind of emphasized in our box plot. And then the 25% here and the 25% here, that is de-emphasized by just drawing those thin lines. So um, let's see some examples. So use the box plot to estimate the five number summary for the data set of salaries in the dental office. So um, here, whenever we're given a graph and we want to um, pull out numbers from it, we'll try our best but it may not be exact um, because you're using your eyes, right? So here, this is the median, this is the middle. So if we were to kind of draw this down, right? Um, what would you say? Well, this looks like it is a little bit less than half, right? Because this side is smaller than this side. So this value here should be a little less than halfway, which would be 50,000. So a little bit less, we could estimate it to be about 48,000. But we definitely don't want to use decimals or try to get it down exactly to like, you know, the, the units place because these are all very large numbers. And now let's do the lowest number. Okay, so if we kind of drop this down. Okay, so that's pretty close to 20,000, but less than. So again, how about we estimate at about 18,000? All right, let's look at the highest value. Well, we're lucky here because this one pretty much uh, is exactly the value. So that would be about $160,000. Uh, and then now let's look at the lower quartile. So that would be right here. All right, and so here, this looks like a little bit more than half because this is less. Uh, than this side. So half of this would be 30,000, a little bit more, let's say 32,000. Uh, and then let's look at the upper quartile. Uh, and uh, this to me looks pretty much in the center of these two, so I'm going to uh, go ahead and put 70,000. Uh, and there you go, we have gotten the lower quartile the upper quartile, the median, the lowest, and the highest value, all from the box plot. All right, uh, now let's, uh, let's do this just using the data values. So um, number two says, the following represents a sample of 15 commute times for workers who live in Austin. All right, so find the five number summary for this data set. So I always like to do low, median, and high, and then figure out these two. So what's the lowest value? Well, if you look at these data uh, values, they're in lowest to greatest. So number five, this would be our lowest value, and then 60 would be our highest value. Uh, and then the median is in the middle, so let us find out what that is. And look at that, we have two values in the middle. So if we were to add these together, 20 plus 20 is 40, and then divide by two, we get 20. So the median is 20. Now we have to find the lower quartile. So what I like to do is I like to just draw a line in between here. So now we're just looking at these values here. So again, we are going to have to find the middle. So cancel out, cancel out, 
cancel out, well, we have two numbers in the middle, but if we do 10 plus 10, that's 20, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So the lower quartile is 10. Uh, and then we do the same thing here. So cancel, cancel, cancel. Here we only have one number in the middle, so that is our median. Uh, and there we go. We have found the five number summary. All right, uh, let's look at number three. The following represents a sample of 20 commute times for workers who live in Houston. So again, we have our data values in order from least to greatest. So again, let's find the lowest value first. So the lowest is five. Highest is 85 this time. Uh, and let's find our middle, our median. And we got two numbers yet again in the middle. So our median will be 20 because 20 plus 20 is 40 and then 40 divided by 2 is 20. Now for the quartiles again, I'm going to divide this into half uh, and now let's find the lower quartile. So cancel, 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 so cancel, 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 cancel and we have two left in the middle. But again, if you do 15 plus 15 is 30, and 30 divided by two is 15. So our lower quartile is 15. Now let's do the upper quartile. So cancel, 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 cancel. Here you have 40 and 45 in the middle. So if you add 40 plus 45, you get 85, and then 85 divided by two is going to give you 42.5. And there is our five number summary. Uh, now, let's graph the vertical box plots uh, next to each other. Uh, and then we will write a sentence to compare the shape, center, and variation of the commute times. And then it says, note, we cannot determine the number of mounds from a box plot, just the symmetry. So uh, let's start off with Austin. So I'm going to start off with the lowest value. So the lowest value we had was 5. So about there. All right. Uh, then we had um, our lower quartile of 10. Then we had our median of 20. Uh, then we had our upper quartile of 30. Uh, and then finally, we had our highest value of 60. All right. So now I'm going to create a box with the quartiles and the median. Uh, and then I'm just going to use that uh, straight line to connect the whiskers. And you're done for Austin. Now, what I'd like to do is I like to include the values uh, just to make it, you know, a little bit clearer when we look at it so we can actually see the exact values. Um, you don't have to do this. It's an option. Uh, and then now let's do Houston. So um, the lowest for Houston was also five. So about there. Um, but the lower quartile was actually 15. Uh, the median was the same. The upper quartile was 42.5. So this is 45, 42.5 is about there. And then our highest value was 85. So right there in the middle. There we go. So now I will use the quartiles and the median to create my box. And then I just connect those straight lines to make my whiskers. And then I'm done. But again, I like to label. So this would be 85. This would be 42.5. This is 20. This is 15. And then this is 5. 
So these would be the box plots of the previous uh, table of the five uh, number summary. So now let's answer some questions. So A says, shapes, are they similar or different, symmetric or skewed? And what does this mean about the commute times? So we could say that the shapes are similar. Um, and the commute times are both skewed to the right because you have the uh, most of the data um, here on the lower half and then you have that long. So if we were to kind of tilt this um, sideways, sorry, like this, right? So you could see the numbers, you see most of the, the data is here, and then you have that long tail to the right. So we could say something like the commute times are both skewed to the right or skewed right. Uh, and then we could say there are some longer commutes in both Austin and Houston. Now, what about these centers? Are they similar or different? Well, here they are definitely similar. In fact, the, uh, the centers for both of them, the median is both 20, uh, which means regarding our commute times that our typical commute time is about 20 minutes in both cities. So we can say the typical commute time is about 20 minutes. in both Austin and Houston. All right, last question. What about the variation? Similar or different? Well, as we can see here, they're de definitely different, right? This is a lot more variation than the data here. What does this mean about how commute times vary in these cities? So there, uh, what that means is that there is more variation in the commute times in Houston uh, than there is variation in the commute times in Austin. So to summarize that into a sentence, we can say there is more variation. Remember, this means spread in the commute times in Houston compared to Austin. Now the last thing we are going to talk about uh, is something called the range rule of thumb. Uh, and this is one way where we can interpret the standard deviation. So a good way to develop a deeper understanding of the standard deviation is to consider an approximation. So this is a keyword. It's an approximation, not an exact answer, called the range rule of thumb, summarized in the box below. So we have the standard deviation is approximately related to the range of the distribution by the range rule of thumb, which tells you that the standard deviation is approximately the range divided by four. Then if we know the range of a data set, and remember, how do we find the range? We take the largest data value and we take the smallest data value and we subtract them. We can use this rule to estimate the standard deviation. Alternatively, if we know the standard deviation for a data set, we can estimate the lowest and highest values as follows. So, we can estimate the lowest value of our data set if we know the mean and the standard deviation. 
And so the lowest will be the mean minus two times the standard deviation, and the highest will be approximately the mean plus two times the standard deviation. The range rule of thumb does not work well when the highest or lowest value is an outlier. So remember, the outlier is that, uh, it's like that aberration. It's, it's something that does not follow what the overall people are doing or the overall data is suggesting. Kind of like um, the previous example I had talked about of um, someone scoring 100 on a test and everybody else scoring, you know, uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s. So let's look at this. So the waiting times for Big Bank vary from uh, 4.1 to 11.0 minutes, while the waiting times for Best Bank vary from 6.6 .6 to 7.8 minutes. Use the range rule of thumb to estimate the standard deviations for the waiting times at Bing, Big Bank and Best Bank. Then, compare the estimates to the actual deviations of 1.96 and 0 0.4, respectively. So, let's start off with Big Bank. All right, so um, remember our approximation will be our standard deviation. is approximately equal to the range divided by 4. So what is our range? Well, what is the uh, largest waiting time? 11.0. Subtract by the smallest waiting time, 4.1, divided by 4. So if we subtract that, we will get 6.9 divided by 4. And then if we divide that, we will get approximately 1.7. So the lowest waiting time um, is 4.1 and the highest waiting time is 11 and so our standard deviation is about 1.7 minutes. Now let's see for best bank. So again same exact thing, same formula. Now here our uh, longest waiting time was 7.8 minutes minus the shortest waiting time, which was 6.6 .6 minutes. Divide that by 4. We end up with 1.2 divided by 4, uh, which gives us approximately 0 0.3 minutes of standard deviation. So now let's compare these to the actual values. So we could say something like, compared to the actual estimates above, the range rule of them slightly underestimated the actual standard deviations. All right, let's look at our last example. Studies of gas mileage of a Prius under varying driving conditions show that it gets a mean of 45 miles per gallon with a standard deviation of 4 miles per gallon. Estimate the maximum and, I'm sorry, the minimum and maximum gas mileage that you can expect under uh, ordinary driving conditions. So here we already know the mean and the standard deviation. We want to know what would be the lowest and highest value, so the maximum or minimum. So we know that the lowest value is approximately the mean minus 2 times the standard deviation. So I'm just going to abbreviate it as SD. So let's see, what was our mean? It was 45 minus 2 times 
the standard deviation, which is 4. So then this gives us 45 minus 8, which ends up giving you 37. Now let's find the highest. Oops, highest value or maximum. So here you're going to have the mean, but you're going to add two, standard, uh, two times the standard deviation. So you still have the 45 mean plus 2 times 4. And so this gives you 45 plus 8, which gives you 53. So to answer this question, we could say the range of gas mileage for the Prius is from 37 to 53 miles per gallon. And we have finished section 6B.